It's the end of the school year, and I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do with five of Google's most popular products that teachers use that need to be cleaned up, organized, and archived. You'll see timestamps on the side and also in the timeline for everything that I'm going to cover. So save yourself some time, maybe, and jump to the part of the video that interests you. And with that, let's get learning. I'm going to start with Google Classroom because it seems like the obvious place to start. We all have Google Classrooms that we've got to do something with. And there are really two choices. We can archive the class, which I always do. I always want to archive the class and I want to have it available so that I can reuse things for years to come. Or you can just unenroll your students. Let me show you both ways. I'm going to start with unenrolling students. To unenroll students or even teachers that are part of your class, you're going to click on the class. You're going to go to people and then you'll see the snowman, the three little dots just to the right of any of your students or any of your teachers. If you click on those three dots, you will see that you have the option to remove. Now, disclaimer, if you remove someone from the class, they have lost all access to that classroom. They're not going to see the comments. They're not going to see the assignments. They're not going to see work, but they will be able to go into their Google Drive still and go to their classroom folder and they would be able to find your class and see their work that's been returned to them. So they still have access to the work, but they won't be a part of the class anymore. What's a little bit easier and it's nice because maybe students want to go back to your class and look at what they did from a year ago or two years ago is that you can archive the class instead. So how do we do this? Well, the class that you want to archive, you're going to click on the snowman, the three dots just to the right of the name, and you will have the ability to archive it. Now, when you archive something, it will archive it for all teachers and all students that are in the class. Students will still be able to see the work that they've done inside of the classroom. They'll still be able to see all the conversations that took place, but they will not be able to interact with the classroom anymore. They won't be able to add comments. They won't be able to add any assignments or turn in any work. Same thing with teachers. The great thing about archiving for teachers is that you are still, as a teacher, able to take lessons from archived classrooms and reuse them for future classrooms. I've done that all the time. If we archive this classroom, where does it actually go? Well, let me show you where that is. In the top left-hand corner, the hamburger menu, I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. Second to last is archived classes. When we go in here, you're going to see all different classes that have been archived over the years for myself. All of these classes, I'm able to take assignments or activities from and reuse them in classes that I'm doing in the future. The one question that I get asked is, can you delete the class completely? And yes, you can, but I don't recommend it to any of my teachers just because I don't like to delete anything. I like keeping everything at my fingertips, but you can delete. So if you wanted to do that, you have to go into the archive classes section, click on the three dots next to the name of the class. You'll see that you have a few options. One of them is delete, which is what you're looking to do, but the other one is restore. So maybe you want to bring a class back, maybe for summer school, or maybe you're just going to redo things for the following year. You can restore that class and then add the students in that you want. The class that I may be archiving, I most likely have a calendar that's attached to that classroom and we want to get that off of our Google Calendar. So let me move over to Google Calendar and what we're going to see on the left hand side of the calendar window is if we scroll down enough we were, should be able to find the calendar that goes along with the Google Classroom that we're archiving. So I found it, I'm going to click the three dots, the snowman just to the right and I'm going to go down to settings and sharing. Now, when I click this, it brings me to the calendar, the name of my Google classroom, and I'm just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Since I'm the teacher and I don't want anyone accessing this calendar anymore, especially me, I'm going to click delete. As it says, this calendar will be permanently erased and no one will be able to use it going forward. That's it. So 
taking a minute to archive your class or remove your students and get rid of any calendars that are still attached to those classes is going to help you clean up your Google Classroom page. Next, let's move on to Google Drive. I get a ton of questions always about, Todd, how can I clean up my Google Drive? So hopefully inside of Google Drive, you have already started to set up folders. Recommendations that I would make if you haven't done this already is start to color code them. Try to color code it toward the name of the folder so that your memory and your eyes go back to that folder quickly and easily. Another thing you can do is start to use emojis in the titles of your folders. Here's a video. If you don't have the emoji keyboard, you can get that as a Chrome extension and it's really easy to use to be able to cut and paste emojis. Another idea is you can use a numbering system. Google Drive defaults to numbers first and then alphabetical order second. So if there's a folder that I wanted at the top of my list, I would right click on it and go to rename. I always put a zero in front of single digits first because once you get to double digits, the one is going to go in front of the zero. So 11 would go in front of just a plain old one. So when I click OK, you'll notice that that folder moves and it now is at the top. It's the first folder that I see when I open up my Google Drive. So I'm figuring that you don't just have folders. You have a ton of different loose documents that you need to do something with. And whether it's deleting them or putting them into folders, the way that you need to do this is to just put five minutes on your smartphone and to start working on that. Start figuring out where those documents need to be, whether they need to be in the trash or whether they need to be in a folder. You can grab multiple documents by using the shift key. So if I click the first one and then go over to the fourth one all the way to the right, it will grab all four of those at once. If you'd like to grab documents individually, you could hold down the control key and just click the ones that you want to move. Once you have the files that you want to move, you can right click and then click move to and it will take those files and allow you to move them to any of the folders that you want that are in your drive. When you put five minutes on a timer over the course of a couple of days, you're gonna notice a big difference in your Google Drive and how it's organized. So one more question that I get a lot is the shared with me space of Google Drive. And what I tell people is that's the closet that you throw everything into when company's coming over just to clean up quickly and get it out of the way. There's no way to organize shared with me. If you need to find something fast, you can search for it up at the top search bar inside of Drive and you can use the advanced search as well. When I click on search in Drive, you can see people, but also different file types. Any name or question or title that's part of the document, you could type it in this search box and then you're able to organize it where you actually want it to go. If Google Drive is something that still is a problem for you and you just don't understand that compared to shared drives, compared to shared with me, I've got a video that you can click on right above me and I will link it in the description of the video as well. This hopefully will explain a little bit further in detail the difference between those three. Next, are you bogged down by bookmarks? I know that I am. I have way too many bookmarks because there's too many things that catch my attention. So it's always good at the end of the year to try to get rid of some of the bookmarks that you know you're not going to look at anymore. And maybe we can bring in some new ideas for the new school year. You're going to go to your bookmark bar and you're going to right click and you're going to go down to bookmark manager. Here you're going to be able to see all the bookmarks that you have and then all the folders that you have as well. Now what's cool about this is it's all in one place and you can reorder things if you want just by clicking on the name of it. So if I click on Edpuzzle and I want to move it up, I'm able to do that. Or if I want to get rid of something because I don't know what it is anymore or I just don't want it, I can go over to the three dots and I can click delete. If you didn't know that you could make folders for certain bookmarks, you can go to the right hand corner with the three dot snowman and you can click on add new folder. You're going to name it. And then any of the favorites that you think you want to go into that folder, you can drag and drop right into that folder. And then you can also drag the folder up so it's a lot further up as well. 
when you open that folder, anything that you've dragged into it will be still be there. So think about not only deleting your bookmarks that you don't use anymore, but making folders for bookmarks to make it easier to find and to kind of group things together that should be grouped. So next, what if you're changing schools or what if you're retiring and you want to take the stuff that you've been working on all of these years with you? Maybe to the next school or just take them with you because you don't know what retirement's actually going to give you. Maybe you're back teaching again next year for some reason. No, no, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, 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 no. In order to do this, you're going to click on your Chrome icon. You're going to click on manage your Google account and you'll see that we can transfer content. So if I click on the start transfer button, it's going to ask me for a destination account and then it's going to send me a code to authenticate and then it, you're going to have to go through the process of verifying your destination account and then you can select the content that you want to copy and transfer. The one thing that I want to make clear is that your education account probably has a large amount of storage. So you want to make sure that whatever account you're transferring to, it's got enough storage for the stuff that you're transferring or else it's just not all going to be there. So finally, the last thing that I always talk about with teachers wrapping up the school year is do you have your Gmail all squared away? There's a few things that I personally love inside of Gmail and how I make it look for myself. And I like to share those with all of the professionals that I work with to hopefully help them out and get their email under control because I've seen some whacked out inboxes. So you will see that I have 27 unread messages and I'm able to roll those up by clicking this little carrot. I've got 305 things that are deemed important and I can roll those up and then I've got everything else which I can undo or roll it up as well. And I got 697 messages there. So I've got a little bit of work to do at the end of this school year to clean up my inbox as well. Well, let's start by how did I get these roll ups here? Unread, important and everything else. You're gonna to go to the settings icon in the top right. You're gonna click on see all settings. You're going to go to inbox and right here for inbox sections if your drop down doesn't say if it maybe it says default for whatever reason you can go to priority inbox and you can start to mess around with what you want to be first second third fourth and you can make some more sections if you want i just put unread first but you can see your options here and how many of those items to actually show. I've got it on 25 and I want everything that's unread to be at the top of my Gmail feed. That way I don't miss something. Next, I just chose important and then everything else. The one thing that you wanna make sure to do is if you do make any changes, if I made a change like this, you're gonna see down at the bottom that there is a save changes button. You have to click that in order for the changes to actually take place. So going back to my Gmail inbox, I know a lot of people that have it so that their inbox looks something like this. This to me is just overwhelming. I like to be able to click on an email and then be able to see it in a separate window without actually leaving this page. So in order to make that happen, you're going to click on the settings button and you're not going to go to see all settings. You just have to go down a little bit in this area. And mine right now is on no split. Let's go ahead and put right of inbox. So now when I go to my inbox, and I get out of settings. If I click on a message on the left hand side, you'll see that I still have all of my messages there that I can see, but I can also see now what the email is that's in front of me. So a small change might make a big difference for you when it comes to this and Gmail. Lastly, I want to stress the difference between archiving and deleting. I tell people don't bother deleting it unless you know it's spam. Something like this, I could go ahead and delete, but something that came from somebody else that I know I may want to reference at a different time or may want to look for it later on, I can just archive it. And then if I search for that, you can see that I knew that the man's name was Anthony and I was able to find the email that he sent very quickly. The difference between archiving something and deleting something is that when you delete something, it goes into the trash can and it's going to get automatically emptied out and you're not going to be able to retrieve it. 
archiving something gets it out of your inbox, but you're always able to use the search box up top to find it later if you ever needed to. So hopefully one thing that I talked about is going to help you organize yourself for the end of this school year, give you a relaxing summer break, and start you off on the right foot in the fall. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you in the next video.